good, Audio Tree viewers? It's me, Psalm One, global hip hop treasure and overall fool for live music. Today is Wednesday, February 7th, 2024. And because it's Black History Month, I'm finna give you some. On February 7th, 1926, Carter G. Woodson started Negro History Week, which led to Black History Month. To deepen the study and scholarship of African American history, all year long. Fuck yeah, shortest month of the year. Let's go. Um, also today, the great hip hop producer Jay Dilla would have been 50 years old. Rest in peace, Dilla. They still trying to copy your drums. Uh, before we get to the performers, I want to shout out our subscribers and remind non-subscribers to click that button and be on the right side of history. While you're at it, follow Audio Tree on every platform there is so you never miss a drop. And who do we have in studio today? OMG, we have Bib in studio straight out of Omaha, Nebraska, the gateway to the West. As one YouTuber put it, Bib is like the best and the worst thing I've ever heard. 1010 would recommend. Agreed. This is ferocious, hardcore fun in a bottle ready to explode all over our faces. And I, for one, did not bring a towel. I'm ready. Hope you are. Ladies, ladies, and gentlemen, please welcome Bib. <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> 
I lied. I had to bring a towel because it got so fucking hot in here. We're here with Nathan, Brock, Bill, Wyatt, and Jonathan, better known as hardcore gospel band Bib. Just kidding about the gospel part. But we made it, guys. We did it. You want to catch your breath right quick? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready when you are. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, first off, I want to thank you for playing my jams. Uh, the Circle is a real head spinner, and it was dope hearing that in front of my eyeballs. So thank you all for doing that. Um, let's get into this album title. I love to get biblical, as my name suggests, Psalm 1. But tell me more about what's behind the ethos of Bib's latest um, project, Biblical. You know, I think it was just a really good play on the name for us. You know, we, we felt like... We're writing something a little special, maybe another Bible for hardcore, who knows? You know, just wanted to just be creative and fun about it and not take it so seriously. It's a very clever uh, play on words. Um, I saw some videos of your show last night in Chicago. How was it? It was amazing. Yeah? Yeah, every time we play Chicago, it's amazing. How many times have you been here? A hundred, 120, <laughs> I have no idea. Was this time any different for y'all? You know? um, I don't know. Chicago is always special. I feel like every time I play here, yeah, it's, it's amazing. A uh, it's a little different every time, different faces, uh, different spots, but uh, I love Chicago. It kind of feels like a second home to us a lot. Definitely. We have a lot of friends here, always play good shows. I've, I love playing Chicago. That's what's up. Um, so during your set, I was kind of like on the sides here in the back. Well, this is kind of where I'm supposed to be. But at a hardcore show, I would be the same place. Way in the back. <laughs> kind of, oh, me same, too. Same, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, as far as um, the physicality goes of hardcore shows, it's kind of in intimidating to many folks. Um, what would you say to folks who are scared to get in the pit? Stand in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could all stay in the back, but what if we don't want to? Like, how do you get a little timid kitty cat to come? Like, what do you say to that person? Oh, man, I don't know. I think you just, just try to have fun in there, you know? I mean, what's going to happen is going to happen. And I think um, a pit at a bib show is kind of like an expressionless kind of place. You can be whoever you want at any moment you want, you know? You can express yourself in any way. You can move in any way you want. You can slam. You can dance. You can twirl around in a circle. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter. I think, you know, it's just fun to get in there and be yourself. So we have two members of the band who do not get in the pit. Any other members of the band who do? No. Maybe why it does sometimes. <laughs> Maybe every well, once in a while. I think the thing about our shows is they're not scary places. I think our sets are really fun, and it's a positive experience. It's not like we're not expressing anything other than positivity and enjoying hardcore music. And I think that shows in most of our mosh pits or whatever. I think people are just being themselves and having fun. Yeah, is that like kind of like the ethos of the whole band? Just kind of like absolutely. do what you want? Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. some bands, like, they want to blow up. Some bands want to just have fun. Some, bland, some bands want to convey the message. So the ideology here these days is just kind of like do what, do what the hell you want. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have no agenda with this band other than playing music. And if it wasn't this band, we'd be playing in another band. So we have no agenda other than playing Pl music. Playing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do you feel like the state of music is bleak right now, or is there always something giving us some like little sliver, glimmer of hope? I think there's a lot of great music and contemporary music right now. I think people are pushing boundaries. There's different bodies and people all over the world playing music, and I think it's really beautiful and special right now. What's a band uh, or artist that you feel like um, you like beside yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> uh, more people to be aware of, maybe even from the uh, Nebraska scene. Nebraska? Lead Spirit. I'll say it for them. Okay. Nathan and Wyatt are in a band called Lead Spirit, and I think they're probably the most important band from Nebraska right now. Black Blake. Black Blake, for sure. Very important artist from Nebraska. Uh, been playing music for 30 years, probably at this point, 20 at least. David Nance. Put out a new record on Third Man a few yep. weeks ago. Yep. Great artist. I love the fact that you're not gatekeeping these answers. You know what I mean? It's like, that's my band. We're from Nebraska. We have no 
ground to stand on to get, keep anything cool or anything. There's no gate. There's no gate. There's there's no gate at all. <laughs> um, as far as your music videos, um, I love the split clip for Two Faced Planet and Bitter Mind. Um, where did y'all shoot that? Uh, it's actually in the basement of this venue in Omaha. Okay. That used to be called Sokol Auditorium, but now it's changed the name to the Admiral. Sokol Underground, right? Sokol Underground, I exactly. love that place. I, that's why I asked, because I was like, that place looks so fucking familiar. It's and in the boiler room of that spot. Yeah. Yeah, they that, ripped it all up. It's not there anymore. It's just a basement now. Okay, so you all kind of like memorialized it with the video? Yeah, it felt, honestly, it felt pretty cool, because we all grew up going to shows there, sure. so yeah. it felt cool to do it there. Yeah, as um, as I feel like any indie band of any genre who tours the Midwest and goes through Omaha possibly has played there. So yeah, yeah it's a pretty historic spot. Um, what was your process to get everyone together to shoot? Are you all do you all live near each other or is it yeah. it's like a phone call situation? Yeah, we all live really close together and talk every day, so it's pretty easy. Nice. Yeah. Um, so Two Faced Planet feels ominous. Um, let's play Worse Apocalyptic Fear. Okay? Uh, Aliens, war bombs killing everything, zombies, or a climate event? I'll say a climate event because it's the most likely one to happen. True. So that's pretty scary to think about for me. It's also slower a little yeah. bit, you know? Mm-hmm. Makes it scarier. It's going to happen over a long <laughs> period of time, a little every day. Slower, yeah. Yeah. Slow death. Yeah. The aliens, are, the, the aliens is in a slow death. I feel like they're watching. Maybe. I think they just Depending. come. And we're gone. Just slowly, like. I would hope the they would help us out a little or something if they <laughs> come here. They don't fuck with us, man. Yeah, I agree. Probably not. Probably <laughs> if you were an alien, would you fuck with us? No. No way. <laughs> I'd stay away. Absolutely. Um, so, what's a conspiracy theory that you believe? I believe Drake leaked his own nudes. <laughs> That's what I believe. Are there any ones? I would believe that. You That's believe that one? Mm-hmm. Bill, you, you got one? Cool. No. Uh, <laughs> the, the Loch Ness Monster. Oh, definitely Loch Ness Monster, <laughs> Bigfoot. They're real. Uh, oh, big time. Big time. <laughs> big time Bigfoot. You'll see. Big time Bigfoot. <laughs> big time Bigfoot. <laughs> um, so, but I, I mentioned Black History Month in my intro. Who's your favorite black person in this room? <laughs> If I really had to think about it, it's Psalm one. I'd probably say Psalm one. I think I'm gonna have to agree Psalm one also. I'm gonna update my bio. <laughs> update the wiki. I, oh, immediately, immediately. Um, you also speak very fondly about. I believe he's your engineer, Arthur Rizk. Oh, yeah. Rizik. Rizik. Didn't want to get his name wrong. Arthur Rizik. Um, you speak about him glowingly in your bio. Um, what exactly were you trying to capture with this album that he was able to like pinpoint and get get you to? You know. What do you guys want to answer this one? Uh, I just think we, we've been talking about trying to record with Arthur for a long time, for a couple of years, probably ever since we started the idea of writing this record. Uh, we love everything else he's done. We're big fans of Candy. Those are people who are really close to us, and I love their records. So it just felt like a natural next step for us, and uh, it worked out amazing. He was so easy to work with just kind of understood what we wanted to do, and we didn't have to really vocalize much for him to get what we were going for. So so you, he kind of helped us get like a bigger, heavier sound, I think, for this 7-inch, which is what we were trying to go for. So yeah. From deluxe to this project, um, the biblical, I can hear the expertise in like what, like what he was doing. Mm-hmm. I don't know all the big engineer terms. That's our... Special engineers in the back, but I don't either. <laughs> like, we, what sound? What is it? Um, but we're, but I could totally hear that in the record. So um, I wanted to just make sure that I understood that a little bit more. I personally wanted to know that. Um, so as far as your tour, um, how how's it been so far? Any cities, sleeper cities that you were already like oh, man. that surprised you possibly? Columbus, Ohio. Really? Yeah, I mean, I, almost every show. I think the Midwest is very underrated, but is very on the up right now. And anytime a band comes through Omaha or anywhere around here, I think they're shocked at how good the show is and how many kids are there, excited and engaged and know what's going on in punk and hardcore music. I think sometimes the smaller the city, 
-hmm. the more interaction you get, you yeah, know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, sometimes when you get to, like, the, you know, the bigger markets, so to speak, like, people might be a little too cool for school. Looking at you, New York City, but uh, it's really, really dope uh, to hear new bands here in the Midwest. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think people come to Omaha not knowing what, you know, what to expect, what's gonna, what to expect what's going to happen. And then there's 200 kids moshing and stage diving to their band. And I don't know, I, we hear all the time that Omaha was the best show on tour. So I think Omaha is a sleeper city in a really special place. Yeah. And no songs about corn or... Well, we like those, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm corny, sorry. It's just, <laughs> I'll tell corn jokes all day. Um, so is there anything else you're looking forward to? I know you're going to... Um, you're going on tour in March with Hotline TNT. Yeah. And then you're going to East Coast in May. Yeah. UK and Europe, June, July. Mm -hmm. Then you're going... Super overseas, Japan, Australia in yeah. the fall. Mm -hmm. Global, worldwide, international gospel hardcore band. I love the <laughs> That's ring. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish you all the best of luck. I really enjoyed the set today. Thank you so much for coming. And we're going to... Anything else anybody want to say before we wrap this up? Thank you for having us. Everyone Thank else you. here... It's not just you. There's a bunch yes. of people standing here that probably never get thanked. So thank you all for being here and doing this. I'd be thanking them. I know you do. Okay. <laughs> Maybe the people watching, they don't know how many people yes. this takes. Yes, to yes. Make it happens. So Absolutely. Thank you to everyone. And I'm just going to continue that sentiment of gratitude. A very big thank you to Bib for blessing us today. And as always, major love to everyone here at Audio Tree spreading the gospel of live music. I'm just going to sweat. It's fine. It's just sweating, and it's fine. Bib is on tour right now, and will be on tour, like we said, all year, all over the place. So if they come anywhere near your city, go to a show and slam it out with these fine folks or stand in the back like I do. Um, also get into their music, including their latest LP, Biblical. Matter of fact, buy it. Buy all of it because you want great music to continue, so you got to buy it sometimes. Uh, once again, likes are good, but subscribing to Audio Tree means you get these videos in the top of your feed as soon as they drop, so do that. Get cool merch at audiotree.shop. And if you want the session audio, get it on apps like Tidal or wherever you stream your music. Finally, follow Audio Tree on social media for more fun content. I'm Psalm One, and I'm here for good music and good conversation. Till next time, stay dangerous. Peace. All right, so you guys want to do it for real now?